the faster moving weaver fish makes no attempt to flee. It's paralyzed, not by fear, but by a mixture of chemicals that the cone snail has released into the surrounding water. Fast acting sedatives that immobilize prey. The cone snail now casts its net. Its extendable mouth begins to engulf the weaver fish. Lionfish are unwanted alien invaders in the Caribbean, and they are destroying native fish stocks. By spearing lionfish and trying to feed them to the sharks of the Hardinez Reef, Noel's plan is to encourage the sharks to start preying on them instinctively. It's taken time and patience. But at last, it seems to be working. Creatures of the Indo-Pacific, lionfish first arrived here in the mid-80s. Florida fish collectors are blamed. As specimens grew too big for their tanks, some were released into the waterways. A recent study of DNA evidence suggests that the whole plague can be narrowed to around a dozen lionfish that interbred. A large female can produce up to two million eggs per year that drift on the ocean currents before the spawn settle on the reef. So it didn't take long for a few aliens to become a scourge. Growing up to a foot long, protected by an array of highly venomous spines. And with a lifespan of up to 15 years, lionfish here have no natural predators to keep their numbers in check. As a result, they've spread at a prodigious rate. Voracious feeders, they take anything they can catch, not only small fish, but also the young of larger species. They have decimated native fish populations that have in places been reduced by over 80%. They are a particular threat in mangroves that normally provide a safe nursery for the young of many fish. And their spread shows no sign of slowing down. Changing the shark's feeding behavior could be the salvation of the reef. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is a wonder of the natural world. Yet, it's under threat. Rising sea temperatures attributed to global warming are killing off the corals that give the reef its structure. Adding to the peril is a natural-born coral killer. At around 30 inches in diameter, an individual crown of thorns starfish can devour up to 30 square feet of coral in a single year, which might not sound like much, but when present in vast numbers, the results are catastrophic. And these sea creatures produce more offspring than any other marine organism on Earth. Each female develops over 50 million eggs in a breeding season. From the age of six months, the diet of juvenile starfish is comprised almost entirely of coral. Its characteristic venomous spines protect it from most predators. En masse, they are a force to be reckoned with. Yet, 
Yet, for the reef, there is hope on the horizon. An unlikely predator. The giant triton. One of the ocean's largest sea snails. Tritons can measure over a foot and a half from tip to tail. This giant gastropod feeds upon sea cucumbers and sea stars. The crown of thorns starfish seems to be one of its favourite foods. When hunting, the triton uses scent trails to track its prey. But it's not the only one with an acute sense of smell. The starfish senses the approaching threat and attempts to flee. The triton gives chase. It may appear that these creatures are going nowhere fast. But make no mistake, this is an active pursuit. A race to the death. With nowhere to hide, the starfish relies on its venomous spines as a last line of defence. But these spines offer little deterrent. Giant tritons have developed a tolerance to the starfish's toxins, and their saliva contains a paralysing agent. Its hard-fought meal is now ready for consumption. It uses a serrated organ known as a radula to lacerate the soft tissue between the starfish's spines, then sucks the life from its paralysed victim, leaving little behind but an empty husk. This hairy frogfish has better luck. She's an expectant mother and has more at stake than just an empty stomach. She tucks behind the coral and waits. mouth balloons to 12 times its original size, creating a vacuum to suck in the prey. The entire process takes just one six thousandth of a second. Far too quick for the prey to react. It's the fastest bite in the animal kingdom. Amidst the subaquatic realm, one puny pugilist stands out from the crowd. The peacock mantis shrimp. Otherworldly in appearance, there's more to this odd creature than meets the eye. It's a formidable predator. Its bizarre appearance is the result of 80 million years of evolution. With an appendage for every occasion, the peacock mantis shrimp is the Swiss army knife of the marine world. Five pairs of legs for feeding, three pairs of legs for walking, two pairs of antenna for reception, ten gills for breathing, two eye stalks bearing an extraordinary pair of compound eyes, and even a set of windscreen wipers. But of its 34 appendages, it's those club-shaped limbs at the fore that make it a true killer. A 
at just six inches, he punches well above his weight. His hunting strategy is one of brute force. Understandable when prey species include the well-armed and well-armoured, not to mention well-camouflaged. But camouflage is of little use when hunted by a peacock mantis shrimp. His eyes are amongst the most complex in the animal kingdom. While human eyes have just three colour photoreceptors, he has 12. With the capacity to see far beyond the human visible spectrum, very little escapes his attention. While the crab's defences are formidable, this seasoned brawler treats them with contempt. He's more than a little territorial and knows exactly who's moving through his patch. Unaware of the mantis shrimp's presence, the crab strays close. Too close. With the velocity of a 22 caliber bullet, the mantis shrimp strike is the fastest in the animal kingdom. The assault is so fast that friction makes the surrounding water boil. The devastating punch knocks limbs off the victim and delivers a quick death. This is the crown of thorns starfish. For it, coral is food and it will eat relentlessly if not kept in check. But to other creatures like the guard crab, coral is home. The crab is prepared to defend its patch from the carnivorous starfish at all costs. The crown of thorns, however, is much larger than most other starfish on the reef, so the tiny crab is forced to take a more stealthy approach. Hidden within the coral, it waits for its moment to attack. When it can, the crab uses its powerful pincers to snip at the starfish's spines and tube-like feet. Before retreating back into the safety of the coral. The crab has won this battle. As the moon rises above the black waters, one of the planet's deadliest creatures embarks on its hunt. It's not as imposing as a killer shark, nor does it instill primal fear as a snake might, but it wields one of the animal kingdom's most potent chemical weapons. Its sting is a death sentence. Having kept a low profile throughout the day, this predator emerges from its sandy hiding spot. A carnivorous cone snail. Its movements are deceptively slow, but it conceals a lightning fast pneumatic weapon, one that delivers a fatal dose of venom. Conus geographus is the most deadly of all the cone snails. Its venom is more complex than the deadliest of snake venom and has claimed the lives of more than 30 people. There is no anti-venom to treat its fatal sting. 
The cone snail prowls the ocean floor, creeping forward with its muscular foot. Its siphon, packed with chemosensors, probes the water. With this appendage, it can sense the chemical trails of prey from considerable distances. It's picked up a scent. A venomous weaver fish. The dorsal spines of this fish are delivery mechanisms for its own mix of defensive toxins. But the cone snail is undeterred. As the sinister assassin creeps towards its mark, the faster moving weaver fish makes no attempt to flee. It's paralysed. Not by fear, but by a mixture of chemicals that the cone snail has released into the surrounding water. Fast acting sedatives that immobilise prey. The cone snail now casts its net. Its extendable mouth begins to engulf the weaver fish. This elastic appendage doubles the snail's length and appears impervious to the weaver fish's toxic defences. With the fish trapped, the cone snail extends its proboscis and readies a kill shot. It fires a hollow tooth filled with toxins. The harpoon floods the fish with venom, instantly attacking the nervous system and shutting down nerve impulses, quickly leading to the prey's demise. The cone snail begins its slow escape from the scene of the crime. Returning to its darkened lair to ingest its meal in solitude and safety.